The meteorologist Don Schwinnaker, we're waiting for that eight o'clock update. And actually, I just got to, it just printed off uh, the uh, off the printer, and the center of Irene has made landfall. Right when we were showing you about ten minutes ago, that little line I drew, just about five ten miles east of Cape Lookout, that's exactly where it went in. Mm -hmm. And when it is a category one 85 mile an hour winds, and we are waiting on the latest projection of the path of Irene, show where it goes next, and we'll show that to you as it comes in. Right now, let's talk about what we're seeing as far as our local region, and we do have some flood warnings to pass along to you. Uh, just moments ago, the National Weather Service in Raleigh actually issuing an urban and small stream flood advisory that does include Wake County and the city of Raleigh, Franklin, Vance, Wake and Warren, all under this urban and small stream advisory. It's not a warning yet, but it's just a heads up to say, hey, look, if you live in these areas with uh, two inches of rain in some spots overnight, in many parts of these counties and with additional showers moving through this morning, flooding could be a concern, especially in low lying and poor drainage areas. So watch out for that. You also have flood warnings in effect from Halifax all the way down to Sampson County. Those areas seeing over three inches of rain could see an additional one to two inches as the day moves along. Here's a live look at Doppler radar at this hour scanning the skies. We'll go into the northern north of Raleigh first where we are seeing a heavier band of showers right now in between Stem and Wake Forest. That's sliding off to the east. We slide south. Wilson, the heavier band of rain that just came through is exiting the region, but you've got more to the east of you out around Greenville and Bethel that will be working. Working through Rocky Mount, uh, you're done with the heavier band, but another one getting ready to move through Roanoke Rapids. You, we know uh, you've been seeing some very heavy rainfall. Another band of heavy rain showers moving your way as well, and we will slide south uh, down to Clinton, Sampson County, with some heavy showers just getting ready to move in there. All right, let's go down to the coast and show you Hurricane Irene as it came on shore uh, officially just a few minutes ago. National Hurricane Center is the one that actually makes the call on when it makes landfall, but it actually the center of the storm will come down in. Here's Cape Lookout right in the middle of your screen and the center of the storm actually crossed right about there just before Atlantic. Now it's tracking off to the north and east. The bulk of the heavy rain shower activity and high winds still off to the north and east of the storm and we will be working through uh, Ocracoke, uh, Hatteras and then on up toward Kill Double Hills and uh, Poplar Branch and Alligator. Those areas all seeing some heavy shower activity. All right, uh, as far as the uh, latest satellite picture goes, this storm is really sucking in some dry air on the back side of it. You can see starts out as a, just a perfect picture of a hurricane right at the start of the loop. But look at the back half of this, how it kind of flattens out right here. That is a little bit of weakening. We've got a lot of dry air back to the west of us. And as it starts to pull that in, it is weakening the storm just a bit. That and the fact that it's going to move across lands should weaken it a little more over the next 24 hours. As far as wind speeds go, uh, Wilmington's at 59. But look, you're close to the eye in Beaufort and it's down to 29 miles an hour. When you get close to that eye and you get inside that eye wall, the winds do die down a bit. Get away from the eye wall out ahead of it and it's 50 miles an hour higher as you get out around Hatteras. Manio's at 46 miles an hour. Here in the Triangle, 28 for a wind gust in the past hour in downtown Raleigh, 33 miles an hour in Sanford, Smithfield, 44. Goldsboro, you've been up around 45, 50 all morning long. Because those winds will continue to howl, we have a wind warning in effect from Halifax County down to Sampson. Wind advisory in effect from the border of Virginia down to Fayetteville, the orange area 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts, this uh, darker area 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts. So anticipate that throughout the day. This is the latest plot from the National Hurricane Center just updated uh, and that's why the information is kind of half on the screen because we haven't even had time to look at this yet. So you and I are looking at this for the first time and let's see where it takes the path of Irene. We'll zoom down in. It has made landfall right here and then it slides off to the north. It looks like it's going to go west a little more west of Nags Head than we anticipated. That means it's going to be over land a little longer. That should weaken it down to a low category one. Then it's going to track along the coast of the Delmarva Peninsula, New Jersey, still making landfall in New York right now. The National Hurricane Center has it as a minimal hurricane, so we will be watching that, but uh, it looks like it makes landfall sometime in New York City tomorrow between about 8 and lunchtime. Certainly something to keep an eye on as we head through the day tomorrow and it exits our region. Today, the forecast kind of looks like this. It's going to be cloudy. We've got scattered showers right now. That's going to continue right through lunchtime. 79 degrees, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Western areas could see a little bit of sunshine. Eastern areas, Goldsboro, Rocky Mount, Wilson, you're going to be under the clouds and still with a few showers. Temperatures up around 80. Quick check on the next seven days. 
It always happens. The storm comes through the next day. It drives out and gets beautiful. It's going to be hot tomorrow. Actually 92 degrees tomorrow, Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday temperatures back in the upper 80s. So it has made landfall for the first time. It's going to go uh, across kind of between the outer banks and the eastern edge of North Carolina. It's going to kind of track through that area and then cross back over the outer banks before going back out to sea. We anticipate that happening sometime around 11 or 12 o'clock is when that should pass back out to sea. Okay. All right. Thank you, Don. Yep. Welcome back now, 757 special coverage of Hurricane Irene. Amber Repenta has been watching some wet road conditions, and we go to her now. She also has some U Report videos and photos for us. Amber? Yeah, good morning. A lot of folks waking up this morning, starting to survey the damage, sending some information into us, and we are trying to monitor it all, so we're going to share some of that with you. Right now, we just want to head outside and show you some of the conditions live around our area. Of course, all of the main action is to the east of us, but we've been seeing some of those outer bands of rain, some moderate rain falling around the Triangle in Durham this morning. We have 85 in Broad Street where things look like they're starting to dry out. At times we've had heavy rain and wind uh, coming through Durham, but the good news is this is happening here on a Saturday when we don't have a lot of folks uh, headed into work. So the volume is light this morning. I-40 and Wade Avenue, wet roads there this morning as we are starting to feel, you know, some of the effects of Irene. And in Fayetteville, as we head over there to Cumberland County, you can see uh, the same conditions there. Just some moderate rain and wind around Owen Drive and Village Drive that we've seen here this morning. I want to show you now some pretty amazing pictures that are coming in here. Viewers sending us these. Uh, we have, this is actually a partial uh, pier collapse in Atlantic Beach this morning due to the heavy surf there. Uh, at the end of that pier, it just washed it away. And we do see this happen a, a lot to piers when they sustain those hurricane force winds and the surf that just surges up like that. It's just too much for those piers to take. And a lot of them have been rebuilt and then they just partially wash away again. Many times when you're out covering these hurricanes, they'll already have them, as you see there, you know, taped off closer to the edge because they are so vulnerable. And that is what we found in Carteret County this morning in Atlantic Beach. And a viewer sent this picture in as well. This is in Beaufort County. And just look at that. It's literally a boat washed up in someone's backyard. That person's not going to be happy when they find that. And you can see the house there pretty submerged uh, with some flooding, dam flooding damage in Beaufort County. And of course, the counties on the east are what where we are seeing the most damage. There are flight delays at RDU. 100 to 400 flights have been canceled all up and down the east coast. So they're just telling everyone if you're planning to travel actually through Monday, you can expect uh, delays, cancellations, and rebookings. And if you have any photos or videos of any of this damage that we are going to start to serve Surveying here from Irene. We'd love to share it with our viewers here at Eyewitness News. You can send it to us at ureport at abc11mail.com. You can also upload them directly at abc11.com. And be sure to tell us where you are and what we're looking at so we are able to convey that information to our viewers. But now, Barbara and John, as the sun is starting to come up, we're starting to get a better idea of some of the damage and the effects of Irene. We'll certainly be sharing that with our viewers all morning long. Busy morning. Back to you guys. Mm -hmm. More to come. Thank you. Keeping you connected with today's breaking news. ABC 11 Eyewitness News starts now. And we're following breaking news this morning. Hurricane Irene has made landfall. We will have the latest on what she's doing now and where she's going. Live team coverage from the North Carolina coast and right here in the Triangle. Good morning, everyone. John Clark along with Barbara Gibbs. All right. Thank you for being with us. Let's go straight to meteorologist Don Schwinniger in the First Alert Storm Center. Irene's made landfall. What is she doing now? Good morning, Don. Uh, she's weakening a little bit, and that is good news, Barbara. And we'll show, show you that weakening in just a moment. First, though, we want to talk about what's going on in the Triangle where we have seen some very heavy rainfall overnight. Uh, Doppler radar continuing to scan the skies and heavy rainfall continuing from Rocky Mount to Smithfield to Goldsboro. Uh, light rain through Wake County will actually switch modes on the radar and show you some of the rainfall totals that, that are coming in off the radar. And you'll notice uh, in eastern portions of Wake County, uh, you've got as much as two and a half inches of rain so far. Smithfield, 3.1 inches. Southeast Wayne County, 4.4 inches. You get up around Wilson County, almost four inches of rain. Rocky Mounts, almost three and a half inches of rain. And we'll go a little bit further north up towards Roanoke Rapids. And uh, you folks up there have certainly seen 
seeing your amount of rainfall too overnight with as much as uh, two and a half to three inches through portions of Halifax County. Now back to the radar and we'll go south and look at this storm as it continues to work its way on shore. The latest radar image showing the heaviest band of rain showers right now north and east of the eye of the storm. We've been checking in with our reporters throughout the morning. Uh, let's zoom down into the Outer Banks and notice right now the, the circulation around the Outer Banks just moving across Cape Lookout. Still plenty of rain on the back side of it, but the heaviest band of rain right now working its way up from Atlantic toward Hatteras. Uh, we've uh, seen our reporters all morning long. Uh, Steve Dorsey is just east of Emerald Isle where the rain has stopped, but the winds are still kind of kicking up. We go north to Hatteras and then on up toward Kill Devil Hills to where Tamara Gibbs is, and she's really in the heart of the storm right now as the winds there continue to pick up wind gusts in excess of 70 miles an hour with this storm as it continues to move through. Again, it made landfall just east of Cape Lookout. I'll put a little line. It uh, looks like it made landfall right about that area, about five miles east of Cape Lookout. Now it's moving off to the north and east. It is expected to weaken just a touch as it progresses over the eastern counties of North Carolina. We'll talk more about the showers that are out there. Plus, we have some warnings in our area. That's coming up in your complete forecast team coverage along with meteorologist Steve Stewart in just a couple of minutes. John and Barbara. Don, thank you. Storm surge on the Outer Banks could cause major issues there. Tamara Gibbs, a, a very wet Tamara Gibbs, is monitoring things for us at Kill Devil Hills. Give us an update, Tamara. Hi, John. Yeah, a serious downpour at this point, to say the very least. The good news, according to emergency officials, no reports of damage or flooding, but obviously that could soon change. Let's try again to give you a look here at what we're encountering, what we're facing up against at the beach here. Emergency officials say we should expect about 12 hours of intense rain, strong winds, and storm surge, as you mentioned. Now, with that storm surge also comes the potential for overwash on roads and beach erosion. The sand dunes here are holding up, but waves are encroaching on the backside of our hotel, as you can see here. Uh, we're actually going to change our live shot location for our next updates because, again, we are taking this storm very seriously. Now, as the eye approaches, it's going to get clear here. It won't look like this. It won't feel like this. So emergency officials are urging people to stay at home. Don't come out and sightsee. This is not a show. It is the real deal. So at this point in time, Irene definitely making her presence known, letting us know that she's a force of nature, and that tide rolling in and encroaching on some buildings. For now, we're live at Kill Devil Hills. Tamara gives ABC 11 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Tamara. Hang it in there. Thank mm -hmm. you, Tamara. Okay, let's go to Wrightsville Beach now. Ed Crump's been there since last night. Hey, and it actually looks like it's a little bit worse. You, it looked like it was better maybe in the last couple of hours, Ed. Yeah, it's off and on. It's off and on. But uh, looking at the radar and all, we're pleased uh, with the way things are going. It looks like we'll maybe out of this before too many more hours. Uh, photographer Chris Hart is showing you out on the beach right now uh, how high the surf is and how ragged the surf is. Actually, some of these waves all of a sudden are breaking cleanly, so that's very strange. Uh, surfers see this. They might be trying to get out here. But uh, yesterday, we had the most problem last night right at high tide. We're just past high tide here, and there is some erosion to these dunes, but it's on the front side. You can't really see it. But the one thing that's been going on here steadily, whether it's heavy or light, is this rain. Hard to uh, imagine or think about just how much rain we've had. So the reason I'm up here is I want to show you something. This is the pool at the hotel where we're staying. And this thing is up at least six inches since uh, last night when all of this started. Uh, it's actually just about to go over the edge. You can see the water just brimming up right on the edge of the pool. All that water, uh, at least that much, has been added by the hurricane since yesterday. So we're getting plenty of water. Uh, we've gotten plenty of water. We're still getting a fair amount of wind, sand blowing around, and some heavy surf. But it looks like, for the most part, we're out of danger here. So we're just going to keep crossing our fingers and hoping that the folks north of us don't have it any worse than we did, Barbara, because uh, there's a lot to be thankful for here right now. Uh, and I say that because once this dies down and people can get out and see what's going on, there may be some damage. But uh, so far, no reports of any major damage. We are without power here, Barbara. Uh, and have been for some time. In fact, the hotel staff spent the night in the hotel. A lot of them did, and they were planning breakfast for the few of us guests who are here. Unfortunately, they just told us it's going to be a continental breakfast, not a hot breakfast. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, thank you so much. Ed Crump live at Wrightsville Beach. Let's go now to meteorologist Don Schwinnaker. And uh, he was talking about that seven hour window of hurricane force winds. The good news is this thing is starting to pick up speed a little bit, so that window might not be as big as they were first told. And uh, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. We certainly have a lot of warnings to pass along to you for even here in the triangle, even with the hurricane so far away. We have flash flood warnings this morning to talk about. Let's show you those warnings right now uh, on weather one. And you can see uh, we have a flash flood warning in effect and that runs from Halifax County all the way down to Sampson County. That is uh, through noon though. The one in Wayne and uh, Johnston and Sampson County runs until noon. The ones up in Halifax, uh, Edgecombe and uh, Nash uh, and Wilson County. That one runs until 915 and then a uh, small stream urban flood advisory that does include Wake County in the city of Raleigh. Those light green uh, uh, counties on the left hand side there. All of those counties are under a flash flood watch that runs through this evening. We're also dealing with high wind warnings across the area. Uh, listen to some of the wind reports coming in. Goldsboro reports uh, over 50 mile an hour wind uh, trees down five miles northwest of Goldsboro. Uh, Rocky Mount Wilson Airport 47 miles an hour for a wind gust within the past hour. 52 miles per hour at uh, the Goldsboro Wayne Airport and at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in uh, Wayne County 54 mile an hour wind there as well. So that high wind warning running from Halifax on down into Sampson County. We have a wind advisor in effect now for Wake County on down toward Fayetteville County. In those counties, you could see winds going over 30 miles an hour. We'll talk more about the winds and what we're seeing uh, coming up right now. Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing on radar. Team coverage continues. Meteorologist Steve Stewart standing by with more. Steve. Well, thank you very much, uh, Don. And yeah, we, we've been watching how much this rain has been moving in. Some areas picking up already. Doppler estimates anywhere from five to eight inches of rainfall along the coast. You factor in the winds. We're going to see numerous trees down. Take a look right now. I want to show you where the rain is and we'll get a little bit closer in and we're going to examine uh, the showers. Now notice as we get uh, closer to the triangle, the showers really tapering off as it gets farther and farther away from the center. The showers do get lighter, but we're still going to see uh, potentially a couple inches of rainfall, especially along the 95 corridor could see three to five inches of rainfall, but we have had landfall. And again, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I'm going to turn one of these radars off and just deal with uh, Moorhead City radar. Uh, we can really pick up where some of the heavier bands are. Now where Havelock is, this wind is coming in from the north right now, extremely strong, and these bands are also coming in from the north. If we go ahead and uh, lapse this, you can see the direction that it's moving right now. So as we see the landfall was uh, just off to the um, east there of Cape Lookout, now moving up towards uh, Ocracoke, getting some really heavy uh, surf there around Ocracoke and Hatteras, and the winds have been gusting there upwards of around uh, 70 to 80 miles an hour. I had a couple reports earlier. Wind gust I think it was 84 in around the Hatteras area uh, and farther to the south. Now notice how we're not seeing a whole heck of a lot of rain in this area right now. We've been watching some dry air coming in on the south side of this storm, which is good news for us. Uh, a couple of things we think it's going to help weaken the storm. Number one and number two uh, and more importantly, we think the uh, overall speed of the storm is going to be increasing a little bit, still moving off to the north right now at about 14 miles an hour. I do want to put on some of the um, not storm tracks, but the watches and warnings we've been talking about all morning, but this is actual storm reports right now, and these are really impressive uh, near the town of Jacksonville. It's just off the screen there, but I'm going to query that. Look at this. This was at 615 this morning, a wind gust of 94 miles an hour. You factor in nearly eight inches of rainfall on top of that. That's significant rain. Uh, the ground's already saturated. I think we're going to see multiple trees down in that particular area. And uh, around Moorhead City, we have some more we could actually query here. Trees down around 15th Street and Highway 70 in Moorhead City. And that was at 329 this morning. And we also had a couple reports of tornadoes last night and some of those outer bands that were moving on shore and that was up closer to uh uh, Lake Landing and Bellhaven, where they had some potential uh, tornadic activity. So again, extremely impressive with this storm. There you see a little better shot on the south side, some potential weakening, uh, and hopefully we'll continue to see that weakening, but this storm has a long way to go. Once it moves out of here, it's going to move into highly populated areas in the northeast and really cause problems from D.C. all the way up to Boston. Don? All right, Stephen, let's go ahead and talk about the forecast as folks head out today in the triangle. They'll see temperatures in the 
upper 70s under cloudy skies. Showers sticking around really throughout the day. I've put a little sunshine in there. That would be our western counties uh, out around Pittsburgh maybe and then you head north up into Orange County. Hillsboro you might see a little bit of sunshine. Eastern counties will stay under the clouds with the showers all day. Quick check on the seven day forecast tomorrow. Everything clears out of here. 92 degrees Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Those temperatures in the upper 80s. Hey guys, I don't know if you saw it or not, but as Steve was going through the different storm reports is uh, this one of the new features on the computer. We can actually see storm reports as they're reported the National Weather Service. One of them said a uh, wind speed uh, uh, wind speed loss when uh, anemometer that's the wind gauge actually broke off so <laughs> yeah that's that was I saw that listed there as he was kind of going through it so some very strong winds along the coast so we'll continue to monitor it over in the weather center breaking things not a good I sign I know yeah all right thank you Don sure thank you. all right speaking of having some uh, rough uh, weather this morning and probably the most that we've seen along our coast is in Pine Knoll Shores yeah let's go now to uh, Scott Dean who has been uh, standing best he can amid the waves there. What's going on, Scott? I tell you what, it, it, is, it is amazing the power of Mother Nature as these are these are the most powerful storms that, that, that Mother Nature dishes out. And we're on the backside of this storm. You never know that this storm has weakened because we're on, we're, we're seeing these winds that are switched out now towards the northwest and the west. And as you can see by the ocean, the uh, spray is moving right to left. And it's not too bad right here on the beach, but what we're hearing now is a different story along Vogue Sound. We're now getting significant sound side flooding, a lot like what they saw with Isabel and also Amelia, where the, uh, the waters are being pushed up into some of the homes uh, around the Country Club, the Bristol Coast Country Club, we're getting re reports, un unofficial reports of, of the water that's about two to three feet high, and now also covering the dock, so there's damage there. What was I saying? Oh, the uh, I have not seen any structural damage, and uh, but that certainly could be, that could be the case in some areas as uh, as these winds are are very very strong. I would say gusting as high as 60 miles an hour or so at times, especially that last gust we saw. So, uh, heard a report. I heard a report that a couple of the piers are damaged. We're going to try to confirm that. But right now, it is ripping down here along on Pine Knoll Shores. Back to you guys. We're all just got the only local meteorologist on our coast. We thank you for that report. It is rough out there. And he used the meteorological term, whoa, oh. when that uh, big wave hit and that gust of wind. All right, so be careful out there, Scott. And if you're just tuning in now, Irene made landfall just before 8 o'clock this morning, five miles east of Cape Lookout. So now we're dealing with, uh, I mean, she's still moving, but we're dealing with some power outages, still winds and rain and... She's well, still hanging around. And, and if you're near the eye, the winds die down around the eye. We uh, heard, had that phone call with a gentleman earlier who was down uh, toward the coast, and he's like, well, the winds are actually only 20, 30 miles an hour. They're going to pick up because mm -hmm. as that moves across, it dies down. Then you get on the backside, and that's what's happening to Scott Dean. Uh, he's on the backside of it now, and so he's wrapped into those big winds. Uh, let's show you the latest uh, plot from the National Hurricane Center, and this is what we have right now. You can see where it made landfall just east of Moorhead City, and the latest information shows Hurricane Irene maximum sustained winds at 85 miles an hour. That is a Category 1 hurricane. It is moving north-northeast about 13-14 miles an hour. So this is the latest track and we actually took the center line out because it, it, it's basically just in this cone right here. It's going to slide up west of Lake Landing and then west of Kill Devil Hills toward Elizabeth City before finally working back out into the ocean. The latest track does take it back out into the ocean east of Norfolk and then right up the Delmarva Peninsula along the coast. So that's what we have uh, so far with all of the wind we're dealing with along the coast. Some of that is spreading into our region. We have a high wind warning in effect for Halifax County, uh, Edgecombe, Nash, uh, down toward uh, Wilson. We also see a high wind warning in effect for Johnston County, Wayne County, and also Sampson County. All of those counties under a high wind warning with 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts possible throughout the day. A wind advisory that does include Fayetteville and Raleigh wind gusts 30 to 40 miles 
an hour there. And then we have that flash flood warning to talk about that has been extended by the National Weather Service. A flash flood and warning now through noontime today from Halifax County all the way down to Sampson County. Raleigh is under an urban and small stream advisory. It's not a flood warning or a flash flood warning, but it's just a hey, if you live near a stream or in a place that normally floods, it certainly could with all the rain we've seen. More rain out there as well. And for more on that, team coverage continues. We go to meteorologist Steve Stewart standing by in the Weather Center. Thanks, Don. Let's get right to it. I want to talk about where the rain is happening now in our area. Most of the rain showers are lighter around the triangle right now, but we're seeing some moderate to heavy showers and these falling right around the 95 corridor where Don was saying all that flood warning is in effect. But notice how it doesn't really spread that much farther off to the to the uh, west with the heavy bands. They're staying tightly wrapped around the center of the storm as it moves off to the north. So again, something that uh, means the farther west you live, the less rain you're going to have and along the 95 corridor. Of course, that's where we have those flood warnings in effect. I'm just turning on now the Moorhead City radar. We talked about the center of the storm over the uh, Pamlico Sound now, so we'll more than likely get some uh, sound side flooding going on here with that storm surge inland there. Waves right now at around 20 feet or so, and you can actually make out where the uh, center is we're not seeing a well-defined eye the satellite obscured but here you can see that eye wall so we talked about the rain showers really tapering off where Scott Dean was now starting to pick up again as those showers right now coming out of the north uh, and it looks like the most of the activity that we have been seeing in and around the storm the winds have died down as they typically do closer to the eye the winds not as strong so around uh, Beaufort around 30 mile an hour winds but you get up to Hatteras 75 mile an hour these are gusts by the way these are not sustained winds so not as strong as first fear. We were expecting some gusts to be as high as, uh, you know, 100 to 115, but that's not the case so far. But still, uh, damage nonetheless when you have this much rain falling and wind gusts like these. Look around Rocky Mountain Wilson, 55. These are not peak gusts at uh, this event. These are the gusts we've had in the last 15 minutes. Around the Triangle, 35, also a 35 in Smithfield. And winds like this, when we get a lot of rain on the ground along that 95 corridor, we're going to see some trees going down. And unfortunately, some of those trees will hit power lines and cause some sporadic power outages. So that's something that we're going to be watching closely uh, as the day goes on. But again, Don, we talked about this storm moving to the north and then moving over water for a bit. And now the track is taking us towards central Long Island instead of right over New York City, which is good news for them. It certainly is. And as we head through the day today, it all depends on where you are as to what you will see. If you're in the western portion of our viewing area, lunchtime will continue to see those cloudy skies hanging around temperatures in the upper 70s and shower activity. If you're in the eastern portion of the viewing area, it's going to rain heavy. And by late this afternoon, western portions of our viewing area, wouldn't be surprised if you see a little sunshine poking through, especially south and west, uh, northeastern portions up around uh, Roanoke Rapids, Rocky Mount. You folks are going to be under the clouds all day with showers continuing right through this evening. Quick check on the seven day forecast, 92 degrees and with a mixture of sun and clouds in the morning, more sunshine in the afternoon. The heat returns and 80 stick around the next week. Guys, I just took a phone call uh, right before we came out to weather from a lady saying, I need to know what's happening with my vacation home down uh, along the coast. And the truth is, we only get what we can get from our reporters who are seeing what they're seeing. Most of the other places are evacuated. We are not allowed into certain areas. Mm -hmm. So as we get that information, what I told the lady on the phone, as we get the information, you'll hear it. If we don't have it, we're not holding back on you. Mm -hmm. So those are just the reports where we have so far from along the coast. And uh, certainly some of those rainfall reports, eight inches in yeah. some spots already. So You know, along the lines of what you're saying, uh, we are getting this information from New Hanover County and Wilmington and Wrightsville Beach. Some folks are lining up to get back into town at Riceville to survey their home's damage, but police are not letting them back in just yet. So we'll let you know when the folks are allowed back yeah, in. A good piece of advice, don't worry about it today. Even though it may start to clear later on today, let the authorities down in that area do their job first. After today, they'll tell you when you can get back in. But if you're saying, well, the storm's already past this area, do not head down today. You're just going to cause problems. And they also okay. said management company. If you've got a management company, contact them first yep. to look at your property. All right. I'm going to show you a live picture now from Nags Head, where we just saw Caitlin Coiner reporting. These are our pictures coming to us via Breaking News 1, via broadband. And you see some of the shingles there and some of the siding coming off that house. She was talking about all the debris that was flying back and forth. That's why she was wearing those goggles. And we even saw some trees behind her really just almost halfway bent over. She was talking about the possibility of some power lines being affected there. But you can see from Breaking News 1 the conditions there in Nags Head. And we will continue to monitor them. We're talking about more than 300,000 power outages in North Carolina so far. 
and that number is expected to rise. If you stay with us, we'll have those phone numbers in case you have a power outage that you need to report from Progress Energy or Duke Power. Right now, 944, our coverage will continue right after this. Stay with us. Let's continue now and talk to meteorologist Don Schwinnaker about uh, what's up with Irene, where she is going. Wouldn't you hate to be that guy? Just watch her right now and go, oh. Should have tied it that's down. Mine. I should have tied that better. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, we are dealing with showers. Uh, we have been since last night. Uh, I think I came in around 1.30 and they had just issued the first warnings. Now we have several flash flood warnings to talk about in our area. And flash flooding, the number two killer in the U.S. If you see the water across the roadway, don't drive through it. The old adage, turn around, don't drown. You're taking a live look at all of the warnings right, right. now through noon. All of the dark green counties under a flash flood warning that extends from Roanoke Rapids all the way down to Sampson County. All the light green counties, including the city of Raleigh and the city of Fayetteville, under a flash flood watch. Also, we have high wind warnings to pass along. Winds are going to continue to be gusty through this evening from Roanoke Rapids all the way down to Clinton. Uh, Goldsboro included in that. Johnston County included. Also, uh, Rocky Mount area included. And then a wind advisory in effect in the dark area, 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts. In the light area, 30 to 40, maybe a, oh, higher than 40 miles an hour. Here's a look at some of the numbers from around the region and uh, these are actual wind gusts just in the past 15 minutes the highest wind gusts recorded 55 miles an hour in Wilmington Oak Islands down to 39 Beaufort's at 30 but it's kind of in the eye so that's a little deceiving get away from the eye 76 miles per hour the last report from Hatteras 51 in Manio 39 in Currituck and 47 in Edenton back in the triangle 51 miles per hour the latest wind gust being reported out of Rocky Mount Wilson at the airport Goldsboro 51 43 in Smithfield 38 miles an hour in Fayetteville and 35 to 35 miles per hour being reported in downtown Raleigh. Let's look at their latest radar picture and show you what we've got right now. We continue to see showers, heavy showers from Rocky Mount to Wilson. Put this into motion real quick and these showers just not moving anywhere. That yellow is staying right over Rocky Mountain Wilson. That means continuous heavy rainfall and that means some localized flooding. Some of that rain will spread west to Raleigh, but once you get out around Durham, Orange County, uh, Siler City, Sanford, those areas in western Harnett County, the rainfall really shutting off. We go from there down to the coast. Moorhead City right now will shut off the radar in Raleigh and just take a look at the Moorhead City National Weather Service radar and the shower activity in Moorhead City. Uh, light, a little less on the east side of the storm, west side of the storm, a lot of wraparound moisture there. Wilmington still in the rain, but the storm continuing to pull away from Wilmington. And I would say if the trend continues down in Wilmington over the next uh, hour or so, you might actually see a break in the rainfall. We slide north where the heavy showers moving from Hatteras on toward Nags Head. Nags Head not done yet as the storm approaches. The winds are actually going to get stronger in Nags, Nags Head, Bellhaven and Plymouth. Team coverage continues. Meteorologist Steve Stewart has been here throughout the night as well and he's got more on where this thing's going and some of those wave heights out there are incredible. They really are. You know, it's just offshore and of course it's the combined seas as well that, you know, the way the storm surge is going to have that the waves on top of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, an absolute mess. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at uh, what we have with those waves and again, Again, very impressive. I'll query some of these to give you an idea. Right off the coast there of Hatteras, uh, waves at around 33 feet. You go in the Pamlico Sound and impressive as well. Anywhere from 16 to uh, 19 feet there. Some of the uh, ones uh, farther to the north at around 22 feet. So very impressive amounts. These are actual buoy reports we have. Now this is, some of these aren't working now, but off the coast there of Bald Head Island, we are seeing a west wind right now. Sustained at 47, gusts to near 60 miles an hour. Waves down to 16 feet, so they've come down quite a bit, and that's because the winds shift, of course. Also, gusts around 58 miles an hour uh, off of Wrightsville Beach, up around Topsail Beach, gusts to 63 with those waves still high at 17 feet, but things will be calming down as we go in the next couple of hours. Satellite imagery, something very interesting of note here. I do want to mention that uh, we've been watching this. Uh, the bottom side of this storm really start to uh, weaken a bit, thanks in part to some dry air that's been moving into the storm. So we we can actually, and I'm going to do my best here to draw a straight line. As we do a cross section of this storm, look at the difference between the right front quadrant, the healthy, really strong one, and down here on the bottom left. I mean, we are talking a significant difference with that dry air intrusion, and you can really start to see that with our water vapor loop, how some of that dry air is really being sucked up on the back side of the storm. Don, we've got a few things going on. Number one, we've got the dry air intrusion. A big part of the storm is over land now, and also it's going to be moving into a 
little bit of vertical wind shear. Uh, that could mean a little bit weaker of a storm, but it looks like it could hold its uh, Category 1 status all the way up close to New York. And as you head through the day, Steve, that dry air may actually mean a few rays of sunshine in places like Sanford and Pittsburgh. Eastern counties from Roanoke Rapids all the way down to uh, Rocky Mount Wilson and down into Clinton will stay under the shower activity. Lunchtime, we anticipate 79 degrees. Still some showers around cloudy skies. Maybe a few breaks in the cloud this afternoon. Quick check on the seven day forecast. It all clears out of here tonight into tomorrow. Sunshine returns along with the heat 92 degrees and over the next several days temps in the 80s. So and we're not done with it yet. We are seeing a little bit of weakening on the backside. That is good news, but it's going to be with us for the next several hours. Right, right. on. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back. Well, many of you have already sent us your pictures and you report videos. That's right. Amber's in the Breaking News Center with that. Amber? Well, Barbara and John, we are certainly weeding through those pictures and video. I want to show you some of the damage that some of the folks are sending to us. This is in Atlantic Beach. You can see the streets flooded there right up to the porch of that home. We have another picture from Atlantic Beach or some video this morning, Atlantic Beach of, we believe it's NC 58, the main road through Atlantic Beach that's also flooded out. One of the piers in Atlantic Beach uh, washed away overnight part part of the pier and now this is what's washing ashore lots of debris pilings and it, it looks like possibly some of those pilings may be part of that pier again Atlantic Beach and Carteret County starting now to get some pretty uh, amazing pictures of what's washing up there also widespread flooding this morning in New Bern they have some pictures sent in there from New Bern the water up to the home the triangle seeing trees down power outages as well and another tree down on a car more than 300,000 now without power back to you too.